Me and Clarence were talking about some situations where, you know, maybe you get pulled over and uh, you're in the wrong. And uh, there have been times I was like, uh, you know, young, <laughs> always going to blame it on when I was young. And, uh, you know, police come and you're like, oh, dear Jesus, give me mercy. I'm in trouble. I'm really in trouble. And uh, anything could happen here. I could go to jail tonight. And uh, so uh, what's that time you had a sobriety test you were talking about? And uh, Yes, yeah, so I was uh, in cost or uh, intoxicated leaving uh, Bell Fountain. I was going about 95 miles per hour, literally, and got pulled over. Um, and uh, the, the cop asked me to step out the car, and he wanted me to do the um, follow the pin, mm -hmm. which I did. And then he asked me to, you know, touch my nose. Mm -hmm. Then he asked me to walk the line, and um, it got kind of comical from there because I just told him. I said, officer, I refuse to do that. Um, I'm drunk, so mm. just take me to jail. So I really did want to be intentional about touching on that and, and uh, really pushing the agenda of just um, everyone being held accountable for their own self-control. I do not think that all cops are terrible and vice versa, but um, I have had my moments, but those was one of the moments yeah. where oh, yeah. I was in the wrong, and yeah. he probably laughed at me. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. 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 So there's a time, again, Clarence is going to share about, uh, was it in Cleveland? It's in Cleveland, yeah, Ohio. Cleveland, Ohio. Yes. And uh, this is unfortunate. But, again, as we do these series, we're dialoguing. We're bringing up the good, the bad, and the ugly. And I mm -hmm. think we need to bring it up. So, But go ahead. So in Cleveland, Ohio, my oldest daughter had a cheerleading competition there. I took my mother, my youngest daughter, and my oldest niece so my oldest niece at the time was 10 years old, and we went to this um, went went to this hotel room, and the hotel room, some for some reason the heat broke. Mm -hmm. So we told the clerk downstairs said, "Listen, the heat the heat broke." She called her supervisor. Her supervisor said, "Put them in another uh, room." So we go to another room the next day, and the heat broke again in this room. Wasn't nothing that we did. I don't want to sound rowdy. But the heat broke uh, dead in the middle of winter, and I went back downstairs. I spoke with the young lady, and we went back and forth. We had a disagreement. I can't remember exactly what the disagreement was about, but I was a little sassy with her, mm -hmm. and I was pinching her. So what ended up happening was I told her to just call your supervisor. So she calls her supervisor, and her supervisor told her to just give them the room for free. And I think that pinched. So what she did, yeah. she called the police on me. Mm. So when I heard her calling the police, I waited in the lobby for the police officer. Um, actually, it was we were about to check out. Yeah. We hadn't got our, uh, our luggage or nothing yet. So the police came, and once again, I'm thinking, I haven't done nothing wrong. They're going to take my side. So uh, two police officers get there, both white males. Um, and she explained to them that, you know, uh, I, I wasn't acting the way she felt I should have acted. So the police officer came over and got my side, and I explained to him she's upset because we had words, and her supervisor told her to just give us the room for free. So um, he told us to go upstairs and get our things. Well, we started going upstairs. We was on the third floor, and I noticed them they were escorting us upstairs, so I stopped. And I said, officer, can you please not escort us upstairs because it's going to look like we done something wrong. Mm -hmm. Nonetheless, he did it anyways. Mm -hmm. They escorted us upstairs, mm -hmm. got on the elevator with us. Um, once we got to the room, they held the door open and watched us get our things, and mm -hmm. then they escorted us out. So they escorted us out. So this, this uh, clerk, this hotel clerk, is what you call a modern-day Karen. So to me, <laughs> it was like you were kind of scratching her itch. And so we got in the parking lot and started driving off. They literally stood outside and watched us drive off. And it really didn't dawn to me how uncomfortable it was until my 10-year-old niece said that that didn't feel good. Mm -hmm. So right there, when you have those type of experiences, mm -hmm. you have already subliminally intimidated 
the 10 year old and the 14 year old so they yeah. no longer look at a yeah. cop as friends and now mind you my niece knows me as a at the time i was a youth pastor at a church so she knows me as a god-fearing man, man and she heard me ask the officer to not follow us upstairs so he did it anyways and again once we got upstairs i had just expressed my concerns and told him that this is a reason why there is a gap between law enforcement mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. in my case black men and black women yeah. so yeah very unfortunate um we're talking to uh so you've you've experienced these things and now when a police officer would come into a scenario like that again your heart races and <laughs> it races and and guess what that sense comes upon the law enforcement and so it escalates so you know again we've got we got a lot of work to do but uh you know again clarence will tell you the first thing you know when i'm wrong and uh, he, he he also talks about how many praises that he gives to some fantastic people that are working in law enforcement that, that give their lives for us and we know that